All right, I guess we can start. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Hi, so thank you for attending our demo today. My name is Maria, and I'm here with uh, Valid. He is the CEO of the two companies that I'm going to present. So we both work for your project Switzerland and for Sonono, and the two companies are situated in Switzerland, in Basel. We develop uh, software solutions that are scalable and for blockchain, mobile, and web. And the main difference between the two companies is that your project Switzerland, um, sorry, <laughs> is that your project Switzerland creates software solutions um, that are with the potential uh, to become a SaaS product. And Sonono um, focus on software for service. Since we started, we are constantly growing and we work on really amazing projects. And we are here today because we want to talk about two blockchain projects that we had. And the first one is for the Kurtz of Basel City. And now Valid will going to tell you what we did there. Okay. Hello, everyone. Nice to see all of you here. I'm really, really happy to attend again to the Hyperledger Global Forum, my last uh, uh, presentation was um, 2018 in Switzerland. Um, I hope we, I can show all of all of the things we are intending to um, present today, because we don't have enough time. But I will do my best. So the first project we uh, would like to uh, present to you is um, it's a project for the Kurds of Basel City in Switzerland. Uh, it's about um, tracing all the Kurds uh, documents, any events on a, on a Kurd document should be traced and should be registered into the blockchain. Um, and at the end, you, we generate an official report for each document. Because this is a very important thing for, for the Kurds in Switzerland that you have to um, um, ha track all the events and, and generate a, a report. And, read, and, and until last year, they were doing that um, on paper, uh, not digitally. and um, they um they have the idea to make that digitally so we um build a blockchain network for them a blockchain ecosystem where you can um connect it to the, their current um, user portal or course portal um to um track all the events so this is uh, something which is running behind the scenes and actually no one knows about it except uh, the kurds and also um it's an internal project for them, so we will not be able to show you everything. Um, so I, I asked them, I asked the team of uh, Kurtz of Basel to do some um, um, some transactions, just to show it to you on the dashboard we have created for that demo. But this is going to be, th this will be real transactions. Um, so just a small um, an introduction about the whole thing. It's it's a it's a blockchain a network uh, based on Hyperledger Fabric and running on Oracle Cloud. We have three nodes. The Kurtz has th three nodes. One of them is a physical node on, internally on the um, on the Kurtz um, intranet. And the other one, the other two are uh, on Oracle blockchain. And we have a middleware here to um, manage all the users and identities. And at the end, um, the Kurtz, our portal of the Kurtz of Basel is communicating with the, with the blockchain network um, through the middleware we have created and also our blockchain explorer is doing the same. So um, I'm not going to take out of time to talk. I'm just going to switch to the demo. So right here, uh, this is just a dashboard, a very simple dashboard where you can see uh, how many blocks we have, how many transactions how many uh, nodes, how many smart contracts running on that network. And it's in German, but it's not difficult to, to understand. Here you can see the, a list of the transactions we have made today. And um, I asked the, them to, to do some uh, transactions. Maybe they do it, maybe not. I have some test transactions to see, but uh, we will see. Uh, right now you can see here at the users table, you can see how many users um, we have right now and how many logins, um, um, success logins they made, because it's all about tracking what is happening. Um, so you can see here, uh, we have uh, one user who 
just, I guess, try to access right now. That's good. Uh, so they're doing it as they're doing the homework as I did. <laughs> um, so maybe let's see what he's doing. So he, he logged in. Let's take a look at the documents and let's sort it uh, according to the latest created. So he created a document um, two minutes ago. Um, and let's check that the information on that document. So you can see the, the number of the, the ID, the, um, the ID of the document, the original version and the current version of the document, the original hash and, and the current hash of the document, who did it, who created the document, when, and how many uploads and so on and so forth. And here you can see uh, all the events which we which are tracked. For example, um, this document has been viewed by a user called Mark at this time, and he show, he saw this version. And this document has been um, shared with Mark, as you can see, right before Mark has seen it, it has been uh, approved to him, or has been shared to him at this time until this day. And you can see here, uh, Laura sent a, a notification to Mark um, that he um, just uh, shared the document with him. This is, uh, these things are very, very important for the Kurds. And here you can see we can generate a BDF um, that, that's a report, but we're not going to do that because it could have some sensitive data. So it's just a BDF which has this kind of information and uh, extra information. Um, this would be the first project. This project is really, really important for the Kurds because all the Kurds in, in, in Switzerland have the same problem and they would like to have something like this. So what we actually basically um, um, offering them, they don't need to create a whole new blockchain ecosystem. They can just participate to that network and have their own nodes, install the, the smart contract they want, and they can have the same thing um, without doing any extra work. Like they just need to um, connect that uh, ecosystem to their current uh, existing systems um, because uh, we providing an ABI uh, which which makes a lot of work easy for the public sector. So this is the first project. Um, just feel free after the talk uh, after I finish to have any questions. Um, let's go to the ne next project, which is a really cool project from Siemens. Um, we worked with Siemens on a very special project to store machine measurement data um, into the blockchain and they should be stored automatically. This means um, the machine um, or, or our system should be able to read the data from a machine automatically and, and write them into the blockchain uh, through a smart contract we have programmed. Um, and this, this is very important for the machine to, to uh, prevent manipulation of the data. And at the end, we generate a mutable a quality certificate for, uh, for, for, for Siemens to make sure, sure that all the measurements that are correct, because this kind of, these machines are very important, like uh, train machines and, and, and different things, which are, um, which is very important to have the correct um, uh, measurement data. So basically you have, here it's a really cool project because you have, you can see here, we have three organizations. We have Siemens as organization number one, we have a supplier organization number two, and we have organization number three with such quality check. Which means um, the supplier send them, give, um, uh, uh, power, um, uh, build the machines for Siemens, for example, and the Siemens could uh, check that machines, check the measurement data, and send that that information to the to the organization number three to um, to check that and, and and generate a certificate and sign the certificate um, uh, by by a logged in user from this from this organization. That's very, very, very simple explanation. There is a lot of uh, details inside this project, but we don't have enough time to do that. So I'm going to um, go through the demo. And after that, maybe we can have some time for um, questions. So let's go to the demo. So here we have mobile application. So let me, I have it on my phone. So I'm gonna try to um, connect my phone. So, I hope it works. Yeah, it works. Nice. Good. So, um, let me log out. 
and let me see here. So we have three organizations. Uh, each organization has its own nodes, own um, user uh, identity management and everything. So I'm going to just uh, take one user, uh, Siemens, the first one. It's an admin user. Uh, just for, uh, for the purpose of the demo, we're going to uh, make all the transactions using Siemens user uh, because we don't have enough time. So um, I'm going to choose Siemens. And then I'm going to um, um, log in. Um, I think I made a simple password. It was something like that. Um, I hope it works. So we are now logged in. As you can see, I have different uh, boxes. I can scan a certificate. I can search for a certificate. And I can um, create a certificate. And I can check the unsigned certificates. So um, I'm going to look at the unsigned certificate here. Here there is an unsigned certificate. I can view it. As you can see, it's created at this time, created by the admin from Siemens organization. Oh, nice. I have five minutes. That's great. <laughs> Um, and then you can see here, I have the first field is the number of the transaction or the ID of the transaction. I can have an order number, but it's not necessary. I have um, another number from, from Siemens. And here I have different, uh, let's say these are different measurement data. And you can see here, um, this, this certificate, the whole certificate record is not signed yet. This means... Um, I have some measurement data which are not finished yet. For example, this one. But this one is, is done. I can, I can check it. This is the first measurement data. And I can see which machine. This is the number of the machine. Um, I can see the description. And I can see the, the signed data. I can view the data which has been entered. Normally, this would be automatically. Um, we get this, this data automatically from a machine. But right now, for the demo, we can boot them manually. So. For example, I would like to um, add another measurement data. So I'm going to try to try the, this one. Like, and then I'm going to scan a machine. I have I made a QR code here for the demo. Let me check if it's going to work. So great. So um, right now you can see I have machine number. Um, and then I, I, I can input the data. So you can see here, I can actually add anything here for the demo. Doesn't matter. Let's say like this. And let's save this data. Now I'm adding this data to the blockchain. Now I'm creating a transaction. So the data has been successfully added to the, to the, to the certificate, but we have to sign this data. So I have to click on the sign data button and as you can see here, um, it's signing the data. And you can see here, I have this uh, measurement data signed now. Right now, if I try, for example, um, to... Now, let's say all the, I, ha I, add, I added all the measurement data for this certificate. So it's, it's done now. I'm going to uh, go back to that certificate. And I would like to sign the certificate now. Because it's um, it's done, we have all the measurement data we need. So we can I can just I need to click on certificate signature or just sign the certificate. And let's take a look here. <clears throat> and now I sign this certificate. If I go to the unsigned certificate, I'm not going to find any certificates to be signed. So um, no certificate finds. Now I can create a new one if I want. Um, um, like, let's create a new certificate. I'm just going to add anything here. I just want to show you the validation of the smart contract. OK. I'm creating a certificate, but an empty one, which is, doesn't have any measurement data. So I have, I have nothing here, actually. What I can do right now, I can go back to the unsigned one. And now you can see I have a new one. Um, so let's say I'm, I want to view it, and I want to sign it directly without adding any data. It shouldn't happen if I made it correctly. <laughs> um, so it takes some time, some time to, um, to run this kind of transactions because it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, a live, dead, um, uh, let's say, network. 
So maybe it takes some time. But in the meantime, we can check out our dashboard because we have a dashboard for this. Oh, let me, it just came here. As you can see here, the, it says here, you have to sign this certificate first. Um, if I try to add a measurement data like the first one here, um, and, and I don't sign it and try to sign the certificate, it will say the certificate has um, signed data, uh, unsigned data, and you have to, to, to sign it. Okay, you can see here also um, the dashboard, similar to the, the, the one of the curves, how many certificates we have, how many signed certificate, and how many unsigned certificate, and there is orders also where you can uh, add to the, the blockchain. You can check the unsigned certificate, and it's really cool here because let's take a look at, at this certificate. Um, it shows you everything about the certificate and it shows you also the views, how many people show that, uh, saw this certificate. Like you can see the admin and, and the checker from the, from the quality company. So it's, it's really, really easy to, um, to track everything here. So basically that's it for, the, um, for that project. Uh, I would like to say that um, there w we were not the only uh, company who worked on that project like Siemens software development, uh, one of the Siemens software development team worked on us, uh, with us on, 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 uh, on, that, on that project. And um, he built also with us uh, the, the blockchain network. And also there are other uh, parties in that um, network like um, Qualitech, it's a company, Fonroll is a company, and Siemens of course. Uh, and there is also a company called Total Material who so, uh, helped us to get this data, the measurement data directly from a database uh, but this wasn't shown here in the demo because uh, it would need more time to show that. Um, I th guess that's it for the, my presentation. Thank you very much. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Yeah, and we hash, we hash the document uh, content, of course. Uh, the documents are stored internally on the on the network of the Kurtz. We're not allowed to store this kind of data, and we're also not allowed to store sensitive data into the blockchain. We just what we what we're trying to do is um, guaranteeing the the immu immutability of the data, and also generate um, um, a trusted report for. Because it's very important for the Kurtz that, like for example, they share the documents with lawyers, journalists. And, and judge, and it's very, very important to see when someone saw a document, when he downloaded the document. I, to be honest, I have no idea why. I'm not good at law, but I think it's a really important thing. So um, for, for us, it's very important to, we just make a hash of the data, store it into the, 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 the blockchain, and, um, and also we, we save the, all the history of the version history and everything. So you are basically accepting the legal documents? Yeah, yeah. And, and there is some kind of permissions, like different rules for the, for, for the user who's going to be logged in. Okay, that means they have already done several uh, modifications on the existing system to integrate. Yeah. Well, we actually, they have the system running, a portal called, po um, something called, uh, Quartz Portal it's called. And what they actually, what we actually did is just, we're tracking the, the events running there. Yeah, but but the Kurtz is not gonna the, the portal is not gonna be accessible uh, when if our network is not running. So it should the network should be running to be able to access the the portal. You, you manage the three nodes on the uh, algorithm for the Kurtz. Yeah. So you manage all of these. Uh, no, the um, we have two nodes running on Oracle Cloud where uh, it's it the account belongs to the Kurtz. And there is an internal node in the Kurtz network where they, where we manage, uh, we we try, we help to to manage them. But uh, the main idea is that this network belongs to the Kurtz puzzle city, not for us. Who decides the number of nodes? And why we? Um, we because it was at the beginning, it was a starter project, let's say, uh, BUC at the beginning, and uh, uh, they asked about how many nodes we should have, and I said to really represent a blockchain network, we shouldn't go uh, lower than three nodes. And when other uh, organizations come to the, to wants to participate, we can, we can load this number of nodes. And they also wanted, uh, they had, um, they wanted to have an internal node. Uh, 
So we have two endorsement nodes on Oracle blockchain just for to make it um, for the endorsement policy, the endorsement process. And the third one is just a committer node. So it j just has a, a, a copy of the ledger. Yeah. Uh, and your team is developing the fabric network, the mobile app, and the Yeah, we, we did all of that, uh, all uh, the front end, back end, and, and the API. Uh, actually, all of the. How big is your team? Um, so each one is responsible. So one is for the front end, one is for the Flutter app, and I was for the blockchain. So four or three who worked on that project. Yeah. How do you certify this to multiple organizations? Sorry? How do you certify this? Certify Share. Ah, share the files. Um, for for the Kurtz or now the Kurtz has was an organization for for the. Um, for, for uh, Siemens, we use uh, Puff, which is uh, from Hyperledger Labs. It's a framework to manage uh, Hyperledger fabric networks. Yeah, you can. Well, you, it depends on the sysadmin you have. Like we use uh, for Siemens, we use AWS. And yeah. yeah. Sorry? How did you write the JSON for the I forgot to, reply, to re repeat the question, sorry. Um, we uh, have we have another app which I can show it show it to you, which uh, connect um, connects to the machine using a uh, Bluetooth, um, and then uh, you can have the data from the machines using a Bluetooth device. Uh, we didn't work on that on that uh, app that uh, has been done from Siemens team, and another company I don't remember the name. So um, this is something which we didn't work on because it was more internally for them. And we were only responsible for uh, putting the data into the blockchain. And, uh, how many people invited to handle the transition? Because I saw that you have kind of uh, transition issues. Did they talk about the transition? They're hard coded, or they're also like instant access? No, they, uh, for, the, for, for now, they are hard coded. Uh, we just say um, when these uh, conditions are not met, you can't do the, the, this action. For now, they are hard coded, but uh, the idea is to make this as digital assets. Any questions? Okay, I think I have to stop. Thank you very much, and feel free to ask me. Thank you.